everybody and a very warm welcome to the latest episode of Hidden Jewels of Soul and Disco. I'm getting mails from you concerning the Soul Stream. This month, uh, out of schedule reasons, there is none. But on March the 4th, there will be another episode of Soul Stream. So don't worry, we continue. Also, a little reminder, this upcoming Saturday, there will be part two of Ask a Business Insider. You love the first part so much, we are doing a second one. I already get in some great questions and honestly, I can hardly wait. I enjoy this kind of live streaming more and more. So I'm trying not to be as, as nervous as usually, so I'm trying to get into it. Anyway, this week I'm featuring an artist who actually where the, the record label understood what they had because they were eager to have her under contract. But out of reasons and circumstances, which can happen from time to time, she never got big. Highly talented in all aspects in a music career, but somehow only released two albums during her lifetime. So this week we'll be featuring Lelo Me Washburn. Lalomi Washburn, or Lomi, as she was called by her friends, colleagues and fans, was born in 1941 in Memphis. Growing up in Memphis, especially in that period of time, meant that she had all kinds of musical influences. Blues, rock and roll, gospel, so you name it. And you can also hear this in all her recordings, the way she sings, the way she does her thing. You, you just feel that there are many, many influences coming together and creating a good new thing. In the 60s, she became one very sought of the backing vocalist. Ray Charles, Chaka Khan, Ike and Tina, you name them. Oh, don't forget Aretha Franklin, of course. And Aretha Franklin only worked with the best. In 1972, she got her first chance to take some giant steps in music business as being part of the group High Voltage. They only released one album in 1972. That's it. She then went on to another project in 1975 with the group Lovecraft. She co-wrote or wrote each and every song on that group's album. And we're talking about 1975. We're talking about she was a woman. She's one of those rare women in music industry back in that time who could really step in as a songwriter, as a singer, as a producer. Next to the fact that she almost, not almost, that she wrote and co-wrote all the tracks she also sang on that album. Unfortunately, the sales were so poorly that the record label said no thanks and the group disappeared. Parachute found her and signed her immediately in 1977 so she could do her own thing, her own soul album. And if the name Gibrid is something saying to you, you should know how important they thought she was to the label. Gibrid is not a name you missed in one of the Harry Potter uh, books or in a Star Trek film. Gibrid was actually founded in 1972. And Gibrid was a design and photography studio who helped the labels doing cover art and all of that when their art department was full. When the disco train got in full swing, Gibrid was also in full swing and they were highly in demand. They did projects for Funkadelic, for Donna Summer, for all the greats. And they were also asked to do the project for Lomani Washburn. And that cover art is now one of the most iconic cover arts, which hardly anybody knows about. But anyway, to make a long story short, and you can feel how excited I am, and I hopefully you like her too, that we are presenting her first solo album, My Music Is Hot. And damn, her music is hot. It's a mixture of soul, disco, 
funk. This album is a danceable record from the beginning to the end. And before I continue my praise, I would say let's have a listen. You said it yourself, that's right, let's do some bumping. Let it be me, yeah, yeah, let's do some bumping. It's great. It's great. Come on, it's great. And let me tell you something about this record. First of all, the cover art is very unique. It's been done by, by Gripit. And when you're in a record store and you see that and you, you, you think it, it must be cult record because it looks like that. And it sure is. That's the back. Also on this record, Lomi co-wrote or wrote each and every song of it. And you barely, you can see here's a cutout. In all those years of collecting, I have never ever seen a version without the cutout. So if you're in the wild and you find one without the cutout, go and get it. The record is not extremely expensive because during the fact that the record label, they signed her right away, they wanted her, and she made a tremendously great record. Her follow-up and last album came out in 1997. So you can imagine that after the release of the album, and it was in 1977, like where like every day stuff was coming out, if you really weren't behind marketing and all of that, you had no chance, no matter how good you are. That was the music industry back in the day. You had to know people. That was way before YouTube or other places where you could present yourself to an audience of millions. So she continued writing songs for Stevie Wonder, for other people, but never, never really made it big. And uh, yeah, that's the label. I love the parachute label. They did some some great stuff so this is the parachute label side one this is the parachute label side two she passed away in 2004 cancer related and it's a sad 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 affair i would have loved to hear her story and her side of the story but once again we can be happy that she left behind a great legacy of music and I'm enjoying this album very very much and this is one of those records if you ask me should I have this in my collection and you like dance music go and get it <laughs> 